looks good. Fine. Roger. Hello everyone, my name is Lalit, and thank you for joining us for Get Kick Started with Coding Competitions. I'm a software engineer at Google, uh, at YouTube, and I'm also the tech lead for Kickstart. I ensure a uh, time for creation of problems, Kickstart problems, and ensure that rounds run smoothly on our platform. I'm here with Shimi and Sadia, who are also Google engineers and Kickstart alumni. So, Shimi. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, sure. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm a software engineer here at Google. I work for Chrome for Android and Android WebView. And I work for Google for about two years. I well, volunteered as a run monitor and uh, contributed to program analysis for Kickstart. Awesome. Sadia? Hi, everyone. I'm Sadia. And I've been with Google for over two years now. And I also work as a software engineer in the AdSpam team here. Uh, I also have helped the Kickstart team this year and still helping with problem uh, data set preparation and verification and solution. And I happen to be also a Kickstart alumni from the 2014 rounds. So let's move on. For those of you who have never heard or participated in Kickstart, Kickstart is one of Google's global online coding competitions, offering programmers of all skill levels the chance to develop and hone their programming skills. Each online round provides a series of fun and challenging algorithmic puzzles designed by us, the Google engineers, so that you really get a taste of the technical skills needed for a career at Google. So throughout the year of 2019, we have eight different Kickstart rounds. And they're held throughout the year at different times so that you can participate in one which is convenient for your own time zone. And you can participate in one, or you can join them all. But we definitely recommend you to uh, participate in as many rounds as possible, because the more, the better. You can find the dates and times of the different rounds in our site, which is g.co slash kickstart in the schedules tab. Registration is open until the last round, which is going to be held in November. Once you create a coding competitions profile and register for kickstart, you are automatically registered for all the upcoming rounds. So all you need to do during a live round is to just log on and compete. Thank you, Sadia, for the overview. Now, I, I would like to hear how were your experiences participating in Kickstart prior to joining Google? So, Shimi, how did you learn about Kickstart? And what made you want to compete? Oh, yeah. So I learned this from a promotion email. Uh, I participated in a lot of programming contests before. So why not to participate in another Google competition, and especially this uh, potential opportunity f f uh, in Google? So I participated in 2015. Uh, that time, it's called uh, APAC University Test. Now it's Kickstart. I see. How about you, Sonia? So I heard it from my teammate, ACM teammate, back at that time. And I was very much into programming contest as well, like Shami. So uh, it seemed like a very good way to get connected to Google. So I said, why not? Awesome. Yeah, I also had a similar experience back in college. I was also into competitive programming. And it was really fun. I think I almost participated in all the rounds for uh, 2015, throughout of 2015 and 16. So that was pretty good. Now, Sadia, what was your favorite part about Kickstart? I think what I liked is my friends, they were all so excited about it. And we were also competing with each other. I really liked the enthusiasm that was there around uh, this thing back in 2014. Great. Now, some of our uh, audiences might be wondering how participating in a Kickstart round can help them in an upcoming technical interview. What do you think about that, Shami? Uh, I would say technical interviews and Kickstart are sharing a lot of in common. And especially, you have to write a solution for the problem, and you have to work on the test cases. You have, or you also have time constraint. And easy and medium problems in Kickstart are very really like a real technical interview questions. Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm. So thank you both for sharing your experiences. I 
I hope that it's really helpful to our viewers. Now, Shimi is going over how we can navigate through the website and how we register for Kickstart. OK, let's get started. Uh, if you have joined us for a past Kickstart round, you will probably notice that we have updated a few things our, on our website and platform. We are really excited about those new changes and want to share some of the new features. As Sadia mentioned, the first step to registering for Kickstart is to create a coding computation profile. Creating this profile will allow you to save and track your Kickstart progress, download participation uh, certificates, and make it easier to compete in other coding competitions too. Make sure you complete registration after creating your profile so you will be set to participate in all of our rounds. The best way to check that you registered, first, head to g.co slash kickstart. When you have signed in, you will first be prompted to sign into your Google account. Do note you will need a Google account to register for Kickstart and use the computation platform. After logging into your Google account, you will be prompted to create a Google coding computation profile. The information you used in this profile, for example, your name and your uh, your country you are representing will be used uh, uh, for Kickstart and also other Google com uh, coding competitions. Uh, if you wish to change this information at any time after creating your profile, you can always go back, uh, go back to this profile page and make updates. Once you have filled all of the Google computation um, profile details and read a uh, grade and the coding computation terms, you will click Create Profile at the bottom of the page. Now, it's important to note that once you have completed this step, you have only created your coding computation profile. You haven't yet registered for Kickstart 2019. To register for Kickstart, this is still one more step you need to complete. On the next page, you will need to review and agree to the Kickstart rule and then select Register to finish signing up for the competition. The best way to check if you have registered successfully is head back to the home page. Open the side drawer in your profile, and you should see an alert that says, you have registered for Kickstart 2019. If you have trouble uh, registering, try some common troubleshooting tips like uh, clearing your cache, enable third-party cookies, or even try uh, from an incognito browser. Once the round begins, you head to a homepage, g.co slash kickstart, where you will find the Compete Now button to take uh, you to the dashboard. Now I will let Lalit to uh, introduce Compete in a round. Thank you, Shimin. That was wonderful. Now, our audiences, you're all set for a kickstart round. And you're excited about it, but what does it actually entail to participate in a round? And let me talk about that. So first, we'll talk about what is the general format of a Kickstart round. You'll be presented with three algorithmic problems to solve within a duration of three hours. And you can use up to 12 languages supported by our platform to write a solution for the given problems. In most cases, your solution will read input from STDN and write to std out. And your solution will be run on our server, and we'll compare your output file with the correct output. Now, each of the problem has a visible and a hidden test set. So visible test sets are usually easier to solve, while hidden data sets require efficient algorithms. The reason for having these is to ensure that we have some suspense when the round ends. Now, we also have a new feature in 2019 on our platform. We can support interactive problems on our platform. What that means is you write a program in a language, and that program interacts with the judge on our server, which is also a program. Now, we can configure some really interesting problems this way. Some of the so I, I'll give you an example. So in this problem, you are in a grid, and you're trying to escape the grid. Some of the cells have been blocked with walls. But you cannot look 
throughout the grid in one go. All you can see is whether you can take one step forward, one step backward, one step towards the left or to the right. Now your aim is to interact with our judge, tell us where you want to go in the grid, and when you reach the exit, your program will be successful. So we, we can curate some really nice problems, and we'll talk about the solution to this problem towards the end. So moving ahead, now this is the dashboard that you'll see when you enter the round. In the dashboard, you can see the problems that are there in the round and how much score you can get by solving them. There are other features here, such as your ranking, the time remaining in the round, and also the scoreboard. You can also ask us questions, questions to the moderators, by clicking on Ask a Question button on the top right and side of the dashboard. So the questions that you can ask, they can be specific to a problem or general questions for the round. There are some of the statistics that you can find in this dashboard. For example, these bars in red and green and gray, they tell you how many participants have solved that particular problem. This will help you decide which of the problems are easier to tackle, and you can attempt to solve those first. So as you, as you know, the results for hidden data set are hidden towards the end of the, until the end of the round, and that's what the gray bar denotes. You can also gather some information about how many attempts you have made for each problem and how many penalties you have accrued. We'll talk more about penalties later. Now I'm going to hand over to Sadia to talk about how to actually attempt a problem. Thank you, Lalit. Uh, so now let's see how to attempt a problem, submit the solution, and get to the top of the scoreboard. So as you can see, each problem has a statement which explains the task at your hand by presenting the problem via a real world scenario. And then there is the input and output section, which explains the format of how your program should read the input and what and how it should output. So your program should read from standard, in, a standard input, and it should write to the standard output. Uh, further, there is the limit section, which specifies the general constraints on the input variables and any other special constraints if needed. So usually, the limits of the visible test set are, such in, it's, are set in such a way uh, so that an inefficient or an easier solution can pass the test set. But for the hidden data set, you might need to adopt a slightly more sophisticated uh, data structure or algorithms, or both. And on the right-hand side, we have an inbuilt editor in which not only you can write your code in your favorite language, uh, but also you can test it. So the way you can test your code against the sample input is by toggling the Show Test Input button in the bottom right. So moving on, you can specify your test input and you can specify your test input and press Run Test button on the bottom right to get the output it produces. So moving on, it's usually a good idea to run a few handmade test cases on your own before you actually submit so that you can avoid the uh, avoidable penalties. And note that it appears as test found one on the competitive submissions tab. Once you're ready to submit, you can make any number of submissions. In the Competitive Submissions tab, you can see that after our test run, we made two attempts, out of which attempt two ran successfully on visible data set. The question mark to the right side of the green tick denotes that this submission will be considered for scoring your submission on the hidden data set. Also note that if you click on the row corresponding to the attempt, then you can see what code you submitted for this attempt. Note that if we make one more attempt, it will be considered for the final submission, and the second attempt's hidden test set will be skipped, which is denoted by the conspicuously similar to do not enter sign that you can find on highways. At this point, I think we can also talk about the penalty times uh, and um, how they work. And, and these two values denote how much time it took for you to submit the attempt that provides you the highest score and how many submissions it took for you to make that attempt. So each problem has their separate score. And as you solve that problem, you accrue that score. Your total score is the submission of all the scores you accrued over the contest. 
and each submission comes with a time penalty, which is actually the time it took for you to submit this solution since the start of the contest. And your final penalty is the submission of all the penalties you accrue throughout the contest. But also for every wrong submission, and by wrong submission we mean the submissions that pass the sample input and output, sample test case, but it couldn't go through the or pass the visible data set, you accrue four minutes time penalty. So of course in the rank list you will be ranked higher if you uh, score higher, and if there are ties we decide to break the tie based on the amount of penalties. So the less time penalty, the better. And now I'll hand it over to Shimmy so that he can tell you what you can do after the round. OK, thanks, Sadia. Uh, so when our rounds end, there are a number of actions you can take to view your result and how you can improve for future rounds. One thing you could do is to head to the dashboard and view whether your submission succeeded for the hidden test set or not. Your points for each of the pro uh, problem and test set are visible in bold. Kickstart engineers will also publish a round overview highlighting the challenges of the contest and the contributions of various Google, uh, Google engineers in preparing the round. You can view this overview by clicking on the left hand side. You will also be able to see everyone's score, rank, and, uh, and penalties in the round on the scoreboard. Uh, we will also publish analysis for every problem after each round to help you understand how to approach them and what's the expected solutions. There can be uh, this can be accessed by clicking on the Open Problem button, followed by clicking on, on, on the Analysis tab to improve your problem solving and uh, algorithmic skills. Uh, we encourage you to go through those in detail. Uh, you can also view other contestants' code for on um, completed rounds by clicking on their nickname uh, in the corresponding scoreboard to see all of the in-contest at attempts and code. Finally, a new feature we are very excited to introduce is you can download a certificate uh, if you submit a solution in the round. To view the certificate, head to View Profile, click View Round Certificate. You will receive a certificate after every round if you participate and submit a solution for points. We will also have a summary certificate for all rounds you participated in. Thank you, Shimin. That's really helpful. Now, to our audiences, you know how to participate on our platform, and you also know the kind of problems that you'll be solving, but how to actually prepare for that? And the first thing I would suggest is that even if you are a seasoned participant, you should familiarize yourself with the FAQs and the platform on our website. Since it's a redesigned UI, there might be some things that you are not familiar with. Now second, which is the most important part in solving problems is getting acquainted with fundamental algorithms and data structures. As a software engineer, these fundamentals are timeless and transcend the boundaries of time. And they are really helpful. They will be really helpful throughout your career. So the kind of data structures that are really helpful in solving the problems in Kickstart rounds are, for example, stacks, queues, lists, and so on. You should also consider learning about some basic algorithms such as graph traversals, binary trees, binary search trees, sorting algorithms. And you should also try to implement them once. Because as you know, in Kickstart, we, we are under a time constraint to write a correct code that covers all the corner cases. And uh, thirdly, it's very important to have a decent grasp in at least one programming language, because during contest time, it will not only help you to code faster, but you can, uh, it can also help you to better avoid the obvious bugs, especially the language-related bugs. But then again, no matter how hard you try, it is very likely that you will still make mistakes. But we can definitely work on improving the speed of catching those mistakes and some very 
uh, useful ways are to write edge cases or to write testing blocks, unit tests, put uh, adequate amount of assert checks, and that's how you can definitely increase the speed of catching bugs. Uh, very good. Another good way to get better at testing uh, is to understand other people's codes because it will help you with the speed of reading code and analyzing anal 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 them for errors. Okay. Uh, fifth and the final tip: practice makes perfect. We recommend taking a look at past the Kickstarter round on the archive page and try your hand at some of the problems in practice mode in a three window mirroring what an official round will be like. This will also help you get comfortable with the new platform. With that, uh, we will take some live questions. Uh, if you get questions about Kickstart and the new platform, uh, please ask your questions in the chat feature. Uh, you can also use our um, hashtag hash Kickstart on Twitter or our Facebook page Kickspacestart to ask us uh, live questions. All right. So thank you, Shimi. Since we are waiting for some questions, I would take this time to talk about the interactive problem that I had mentioned earlier. Now, to repeat the problem, it went like, you are in a grid. Forget programming and everything. You are in a grid. All you know is where you can go. You only see whether you can go one step forward, backward, towards the left, or the right. Now you're trying to get out of this grid. It's guaranteed that there's an exit. How would you do that? So the most intuitive solution for that is you place your left hand on a wall or a block and just keep moving forward. And by forward, I mean if you can't go forward, you go towards the left. And if you can't even go towards the left, you go to the right and so on. And it's guaranteed to take you to an exit. So that's, that gives you an idea of how interactive problems will work. You can also test those skills. Um, you can solve some interactive problems. One of them was present in our practice round. It's called number guessing. So make sure you get acquainted with that. Now, talking about the live questions. So the question is, can I participate in a round even if it's not in my time zone? Sadia, you want to take that? Yeah, sure. So yeah, also totally, you can uh, take part in any round at any time, whenever uh, it happens. Uh, we just uh, we rotate around different time zones so that uh, in your time zone, you can find some rounds that are convenient for you to attend in a reasonable time. But there is no limit to it, so you can attend as many rounds as you can. There is no limit to it. Thank you, Sadia. Moving ahead. So. Uh, do we have some age limit in the competition? I'll take that. So you must be 16 years of age or older to participate in the competition. So that's that. Next question. Can we practice on this platform before the first round? Shimi, can you take that? Uh, yeah, sure. So. Uh, I would say you could practice on this platform before the uh, counter, uh, before the first round. So uh, we have a lot of past uh, programs in our archive page. So you could definitely take a, take a look of those programs. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. One question we have. Wondering if the tests will use different time limits for performances in different languages. So no, we don't have different time limits for different languages. And in future, we might consider implementing that. But as of now, we make sure that slower and interpreted languages are also able to pass the test set that we design. And in some cases, in the worst case, if it is not possible for slower languages like Python to work, we mentioned in the statement. But that's a worst case, and you can expect that not to happen. I hope that answers your question. Moving on, can we use other IDEs to code and then just paste and test the code on the platform? Sadia? Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, sure, you can do that. That ID is there to help you um, in any way it can. So sure, if you think that's convenient for you, go ahead with that. Yeah, what what is your favorite ID, Sadia? 
My favorite ID back when I was in uh, high school, my favorite ID was Code Blocks. I just loved how colorful it is. I know I'm old school, but I really liked it. Uh, but now uh, I'm very much used to the internal ID that we use, CIDR. Um, yeah, so right now I, I will call it my favorite because I use it most of the time. Awesome. All right, next question we have is, do you upload solutions of these questions, Shimi? OK, yeah, I would take that. Uh, so after every round, we will upload a analysis to the problems. Uh, you, could uh, you could also click on contestants' uh, code nickname to in, in the corresponding scoreboard to download their solution to check out the, um, to check out the what the expected solutions from other people. So I guess the hope that answers your question. Yeah, that makes total sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next question we have is, is input read from file, like reading text from file? So in Unix, we have a concept called STDN. And the input file will be supplied to your program via STD input, the standard input. And it should output the solution. Any output you your program does should go to standard output. And that output file, we compare with what we expect it to be. and then a judge will announce whether it's a it's an acceptable output or not. In some problems, uh, there are there could be more than one solution. So, in that case, you can output any of the solutions. In case of interactive problems, though, there is one twist that after outputting every time you need to flush your standard output, that gives a cue to the judge that you have stopped your output, and then it can give you the next input, and so on. So these details are also mentioned in the an analysis of our practice round interactive problem called number guessing. So do check, it out, do check it out. All right, uh, moving ahead. What should someone do who has very basic knowledge of coding and has failed to solve any practice questions? Sadi? Uh, I would just say practice more, because practice will make you perfect. Practice will make you better. And we have eight different rounds throughout the year. The last one is in November. You have plenty of time, I believe, to get better and to do better if, we ju if you just keep practicing. So I'll just um, uh, ask you to keep up. Yeah, uh, everyone has to start somewhere, right? Programmers are not born. They are made. So. I remember when I first wrote my program back then, that was in 2012. And it was a simple Fibonacci program. I had to output Fibonacci numbers. And I couldn't do that. So, But what I did was I put in some efforts. I made sure that I'm always learning. And yeah, after that, all the other problems seemed easy. So as Sadia mentioned, just keep at it. And we are pretty sure you'll make it. One thing I want to comment is uh, we do have analysis for each problem. And you could also see other people's uh, code. Uh, that will also help you, uh, you to understand what the problem is, what the solution is. I think that will be a good way. Yeah, I agree. That's a very good point. Right. So the next question is, what could be the reasons for a run error? I'll take that. So I think what you mean is sometimes our judge says that it's a runtime error. There could be various reasons for that. For a normal problem, which is not interactive, the most common reasons are when your program is accessing more memory than, than that's been allocated. Those memory limits are mentioned in the problem statement. And sometimes. There could be some memory leaks due to which you are trying to access a memory that has not been allocated. This is an issue with programming languages like C++. Or your solution could be running, uh, trying to access an index in an array that's of size 5, and you're trying to access, mm -hmm. let's say, sixth element. So there's, there are some common reasons. You can read FAQs to know about more reasons. One thing I'd like to add here is if you put asserts in your code when they fail, you can also get runtime errors. So you can technically utilize runtime errors to figure out um, 
uh, holes in your solution or something is going wrong. So just, yeah, try for it. Yeah, that's a very helpful uh, scenario. Thank you, Sadia, for that. Nice. All right, moving ahead. Can I get a job from Google by participating? So how Kickstart started was it gives you an insight into the technical culture at Google. It helps you know how what are the kind of problems it, that software engineering tries to solve. And if you perform well, you might get a call from Google recruiters to interview with us. One more question. Uh, is this a team contest? This is not a team contest. And we encourage collaboration after the rounds. We have our Facebook group where you can learn from other Kickstarters. If you are interested in a team competition, you can try uh, your hand at our team competition hash code. Thank you. Thanks a lot for all the great questions and joining us today. Now, get kickstarted. So how do you do that? We have talked uh, talked a lot of things, and you might feel that this is all very new to you, or you're getting confused. But all of that can get sorted out. And the first thing, of course, is just go ahead and register on our website. The other thing that we'll suggest is try practicing on old rounds. That's really helpful. Just put a clock of three hours. Go ahead and try to solve whatever you can. After you finish the three hour round simulation, you can take a look at analysis as Shimi had mentioned, those are really helpful. You should check out the schedule page for upcoming rounds. That will help you stay updated on what are the upcoming rounds. You can join our Facebook group, Kickstart. It's a, we have a community over there of all the Kickstart participants. You can talk to them, share your experiences, try to figure out why your solution is not working. And we will also try to help you anytime over there. And finally, if you have still have questions, you can read our FAQs. Those have been written in a very concise manner, and we have tried to cover everything. But if still it does not help you, you can mail us at kickstart at google.com. And that's it, folks. Thanks a lot. And goodbye.